Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have oral candidiasis or oral thrush, which is also known as moniliasis or candidosis. Moniliasis, uh, it is a older name of candidiasis. Now it is known as uh, candidiasis because it is caused by candida albicans. So let's see the details of oral candidiasis. Oral candidiasis, which is caused by infection with yeast-like fungus, which is known as candida albicans. And there are other organisms also which uh, causing this uh, infection, uh, such as candida tropicalis, candida fumata, candida cruzi. So it's nothing but uh, a fungus-like infection which is present in the oral cavity could be on the uh, any part of the oral cavity it could be on the tongue buccal mucosa palate or any part of the oral cavity and this candida infection which is a opportunistic uh, fungal pathogen which is responsible for candidiasis in humans which grow in several different morphological forms ranging from uh, unicellular budding yeast to a true hyphae with parallel side walls could be in any format and basically this candida albicans is a unicellular oval shaped diploid fungus unicellular oval shaped and diploid fungus and it is a uh, form of yeast this uh, candida albicans live as harmless organisms in the GAT and genitourinary tract and are found in our almost 70 percentage of the population so overgrowth of these organisms however lead to the infection or disease so it could be seen on not just in the oral cavity but also skin genitals throat mouth and even blood so while uh, moving on to our topic that is oral candidiasis or oral thrush or moniliasis or candidosis first we'll start with the classification it is basically classified as primary and secondary candidiasis secondary is nothing but it is a manifestation of systemic mucocutaneous candidiasis like thymic aplasia and candido endocrinopathy syndrome it's not very much important so the primary oral candidiasis we have acute type chronic candida associated lesions and keratinized primary lesions with super infected candida so in acute uh, candidiasis we have pseudomembranous and erythematous in chronic we have hyperblastic hyperblastic erythematous and again pseudomembranous then candida associated lesions are dentostromatitis, angular stomatitis, median rhomboid glossitis and keratinized primary lesions with super infected candida is leukoplakia, lichen planus or lupus erythematis and also secondary candidiasis. So what are the predisposing factors for this candida infection? The major predisposing factor is the change in oral microbial flora. That is the administration of antibiotics, especially broad spectrum, uh, which creates a change in uh, microbial flora of oral cavity and xerostomia, which is secondary to any anticholinergic agents and salivary gland disease. All this could change the microbial flora of oral cavity. And the next predisposing factor is local irritation. It is due to uh, the orthodontic appliances and various types of dentures. Uh, heavy smoking and also drug therapy also could lead to this infection like corticosteroids or cytotoxic drug or any other immunosuppressive drugs and also it is due to radiation therapy and systemic diseases like leukemia, lymphoma, diabetes, tuberculosis, epithelial dysplasia and malnourishment also a predisposing factor because of 
low vitamin A, uh, low iron level or low pyridoxine level, it could uh, contribute to the candida albicans infection. And age, uh, the vulnerable age like infancy, old age and pregnancy can also be a predisposing factor. Endocrine deficiency, it could be due to hypoparathyroidism, hypothyroidism, Addison's disease. So we'll start with the pseudomembranous candidiasis, which is coming under acute classification, which is also known as thrush, oral thrush, which is superficial infection of upper layer of oral mucous membrane and the fungal growth, there will be desquamation of epithelial cells and accumulation of bacteria, keratin and necrotic tissue which is forming a pseudo membrane and the clinical features uh, in infants it could be between 6 to 10 days after birth 6 to 10 days and infection from uh, maternal vaginal canal and there will be soft whitish or bluish uh, white patches on the oral mucosa it is mostly painless and it is removed with little difficulty whereas in adult the site is uh, roof of mouth retromolar area mucobuccal fold and it is most commonly seen in females than males and the symptoms uh, rapid onset of bad taste and discomfort from spicy food burning sensation and white plague like uh, pearly white or bluish white which resemble cottage cheese or curdled milk cottage cheese or curdled milk so these appearance can be seen in pseudomembranous form on diagnosis the chronic hyperplastic um, leukoplakia this is hyperplastic uh, leukoplakia can be diagnosed as firm and white leathery appearance which is difficult to rub. Differential diagnosis includes lichen planus, hairy leukoplakia and uh, other bacterial infections. And there is one uh, peculiar disease which is known as ID reaction. Okay. ID reaction. It is nothing but a secondary response characterized by localized or generalized sterile vesico papular rash okay vesico papular rash the presence of vesico papular rash and which is believed to be allergic response of candida antigen okay because of this candida antigen if there is vesico papular rash which is known as id reaction And next we have in chronic uh, format that is chronic atrophic candidiasis. Chronic atrophic. Before we study chronic hyperplastic. Chronic atrophic candidiasis is nothing but denture stomatitis. Denture stomatitis uh, all of us know. It is a manifestation of erythematous candidiasis. Uh, which is found under complete denture or partial dentures mostly under palate appearance is uh, speckled curd like white lesions and there will be patchy distribution soreness and dryness of mouth so it appear as a bright red palatal tissue with edema and granular appearance there will be sharp outline of this redness and the multiple pinpoint foci of hyperemia usually uh, seen in maxilla okay foci of hyperemia so we can diagnose it as uh, erythematous uh, area under complete denture differential diagnosis could be erosive lichen planus allergic reaction due to denture base so all these are uh, the common types of uh, oral candidiasis now let's move on to the treatment of oral candidiasis so we can uh, go for a topical treatment this is topical tropical and systemic one usually seven days treatment we follow 
and oral symptoms usually disappears in 2 to 5 days and the relapse is uh, common because of this underlying immunodeficiency so since if you are not treating the immunodeficiency problem the, the relapse is very common and we need to remove the causal factor so many candidiasis is or it can be controlled by removing the causal factors such as ill-fitting dentures or changing the antibiotics or withdrawing the antibiotics or ask the patient to clean the danger using an antifungal agent so in topical treatment uh, which is preferred because it is uh, less systemic absorption and effectiveness it depends on entirely on patients complaints so that is the problem since it is uh, not going in systemic uh, circulation and it is less uh, with less side effect but the patient complaints is uh, very much important for the, its if effectiveness so the most common one is clotrimazole okay clotrimazole clotrimazole is most commonly used topical agent which is antibacterial as well as anti fungal property we give 10 milligram tablet 10 mg tablet which is soluble in water five times a day okay 10 mg tablet of clotrimazole five times a day or one percentage gentian violet one percentage gentian violet which is uh, not ideal why because there will be an aesthetic staining properties so most commonly used clotrimazole 10 mg tablet five times a day which is soluble in water okay or we can also go for nystatin nystatin which is uh, around 2 lakh unit uh, we can apply for 5 times a day which is uh, dissolved in mouth also 1 lakh unit 5 times a day or oral rinse in 20 ml of water or we can use amphotericin B which is 0.1 mg or 5 to 10 ml uh, oral rinse which can be used thrice a day and we can uh, go for a combination like triamcinolone uh, nystatin uh, for angular chelitis and uh, for acute atrophic candidiasis we can uh, think about tetracycline and amphotericin B a combination of these two we can use in acute atrophic candidiasis tetracycline along with amphotericin tetracycline and in angular chelitis angular chelitis we can think of nystatin along with triamcinolone 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 we can think of and also we have uh, mycostatin cream Mycostatin cream which is uh, 1 lakh unit which is placed under the tongue for 3 times a day and also we have uh, oral uh, rinse format 3 times a day and uh, edoquinol is an antifungal and antibacterial agent which is uh, combined with corticosteroids and it can be used for angular colitis edoquinol so we have topical in method uh, clotrimazole, uh, gentian violet, nystatin, amphotericin B, mycostatin and edocanol, tetracycline and triamcinolone can be uh, used as a combination. In systemic uh, methods we have nystatin 250 mg 3 times a day for 2 weeks then followed by once per day for the next 3 weeks then we have ketoconazole which is 200 mg with food once a day 200 mg okay once a day and there should be uh, liver side effects so continuous monitoring is required okay and also we can think of itraconazole 100 or 200 mg capsule twice a day for two weeks and also fluconazole fluconazole 100 mg twice a day for two weeks so all these can be uh, 
used as a treatment regimen either it could be topical or systemic so we have learned about uh, the classification uh, each clinical features and diagnosis and differential diagnosis then in detail about the treatment part which includes topical and systemic so i'll come up with a new topic in to industry and more thank you Thank <music> you.